Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm working on the power feed mechanism that drives the table back and forth in the longitudinal direction. So on one end, there's gonna be a pulley with a V-belt driven off of the spindle. And then this telescoping bit in the middle accounts for any change in location of the table. And then there's a worm and worm gear on this end that engage the lead screw of the table to drive it back and forth. Let's head over to the mill and get the rest of this installed. All right, I hope this shows up okay. There's not the best lighting underneath here. Basically, this part pivots on a little pin through here. This guy. And then there's a spring that goes around the pin and into this hole, into this hole on the lever that keeps it pushed in the disengaged direction by default. So first things first, we're gonna put this little pin in and it's held in with a set screw. Now the spring is going to be a little bit of a tricky part. So that's started. Let's see if I can't leave this up here out of my way. Now all I have to do is push the spring up onto that pin. There it goes. So that should be on all the way. There's a little collar that holds it on. And now this should spring down, yep. So then There's a little lever that goes over here, upside down, like that, that's used to engage and disengage this piece. a spring to keep it in place. All right, so when you engage, when the spindle's turning and this shaft will be spinning, you engage the power feed by just pushing this up. Now, it's not gonna wanna engage unless it's in the right spot, but if it were spinning, that's engaged. And then there's another piece, a stop, that's gonna be mounted to the table up here. Pushes this pin, 
deactivates this lever and allows this to drop like that to disengage the worm and worm gear. Here's another view of how this thing works. If you want to engage the feed, you just lift this up until it clicks up like that. And then there would be a stop mounted to the table in, with this T-slot. You can set it wherever you want it. And when it gets to the end of your cut, it comes along and pushes this down to disengage the feed. Pretty neat design. I'm missing this adjustable stop part of it, so I'm gonna make one. Okay, here's some pieces of stock that are going to be the uh, power feed stop. This is a piece of inch and a half by three quarter. And this is just a little off cut three eighths by about three quarters. So this is going to be the T-nut that goes in the back and then we'll cut off a chunk of this and use this for the uh, stop that triggers the power feed to kick out. Let me get a piece of each of these cut off and then we'll head over to the milling machine. I didn't explain exactly what I was doing for all of the steps while making this. I don't know how much detail you guys want me to go into when making a pretty simple part. Most of the dimensions didn't matter. The length and the depth of cut weren't that important. I just made the profile of the T so that it would fit nicely into the T slot. This is sort of an odd dimension, 340 some odd thousandths. So it's not a common nominal measurement and I just took equal amounts off of both sides of the T until it fit nicely in there. So now all I have to do is drill and tap for quarter 20. I squared up the saw cut edges and then took the width down. It was inch and a half, it didn't need to be that wide. So I took it down to one inch. I'm gonna measure from this surface here to the center of the T-slot and then put a quarter inch clearance hole in here. Countersink it so that my socket head cap screw sits down in there flush. And that way, when this travels along, the bottom of it here will push this button all the way down in to disengage the feed. After that, I'm gonna spin it around to the back side. We'll center up on here. Like I said, it should be about an inch. Move up a half an inch, and I'm gonna put another hole in here, only probably halfway through, and I'm gonna use 3 16 just because I have a dowel pin that's 3 16 And I'm gonna use this to help me index it in the vise in order to cut a radius around this bottom edge so that it travels along and contacts this smoothly. That hole will only be on the back, you won't see it from the front.
Now we just put our dowel pin in there. And we can use it to help us index this piece around while we cut the radius on these two corners. That's not the only way to do this. There's a dozen ways you could cut a radius on there if you had a rotary table or whatnot. This is just a pretty simple and quick method to do it. I'm gonna start out with the piece squared up in here and then use a piece of paper to come down and touch off. Good. Lock the quill feed. And that's as low as we'll go. Now we can just give this a slight angle. And we'll make a cut. The smaller the index is you rotate this thing, the more accurate your radius is, or the more the less amount of filing you'll have to do to smooth it out. Little bit of filing and the radius turned out pretty well. The last feature we need to put into this piece is to keep it permanently straight up and down. This button is not easy to push and if we just bolt it up there like this it's just gonna get pushed out of the way. So we're going to key it in to the T-slot, relieve this material you can see the picture of the original one was exactly like this. And that'll keep it permanently straight up and down, riding in that T-slot. Won't allow it to get pushed out of the way like that. I did a little work off camera, rounded over all these edges, just so they weren't so sharp, and relieved a little bit more on the bottom half of the back. The saddle actually sticks out ever so slightly more than the table, and I didn't want it clamping onto that when I tighten it on there. Then I soaked it overnight in Evaporust, sort of etches the metal, evens out all the finish, and matches the parts that I had cleaned up a little bit. So when it's feeding along, should just push that button down and disengage the power feed. I can't actually test it until the machine is powered up because if I have this engaged, I can't turn the lead screw. It has to be being turned through the worm and worm gear by the shaft. So right now I can't turn the lead screw to see if it'll kick this out, but there's no reason it shouldn't. So the last thing we have to do is just hook up the other end of our power feed shaft. 
This is the bracket that supports the other end. There's a little port in it here so you can add oil. And this just bolts up to the back of the column here. The vertical adjustment in it allows you to tension a pulley from here to there, a tension of V-belt. For now, I'm just gonna leave it somewhere in the middle. So there's this pulley that goes on this shaft. Three different options for three different feed rates of the power feed. And there's a similar pulley that'll go on the back of the spindle connected by a V-belt. And then the adjustment in here just lets you tension the V-belt up. And this bit should account for any change in height or position of the saddle. Next up is to start working on the spindle. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.